the first thing is that in this uh, hybrid cloud transformation, in reality, we are seeing multiple transformations at the same time, and that makes it even more complicated. The first one is this notion that uh, applications are evolving very fast. We are all used to maybe monolithic applications living inside VMs or traditional bare metal servers running uh, well-established applications. But at the same time, there is a new transformation towards cloud native, where we start developing with containers, with PaaS frameworks, uh, using SaaS services from Google Cloud, from uh, Salesforce, from Wordday. And now we have to figure out a way to put everything together. And this happens not on a confined location in four walls in the data center, but now happens in a world that is much more difficult. It happens across multiple geographies, multiple clouds, multiple offices, multiple branches. And now you have to figure out a way how to solve those problems when you have very heterogeneous applications that they have to communicate between the ones that have been there for 20 years to the ones that are being designed right now. You have a problem of portability. As you refresh data centers, as you go to different clouds, as you go to different substrates, how do you do that in order to keep your applications running with the level of SLA that you require? And then all this combined with the fact that you have to secure it. How do you secure it across multiple locations, across multiple clouds, across multiple geographies, especially when you have to think in terms of regulations, compliance, data governance? So it's, it's very complicated. And here we are just talking about application evolution, but what about data? When an application touches a user that is connecting to an app and generates some data, where do you store the data? What kind of regulations? What kind of uh, compliance? Uh, do you have to forget about this data? How do you track it? So it's, it's quite complicated. So now what happened, though, is that uh, as we were going through this journey, the infrastructure has to start changing and adjusting to this new reality. And traditionally, we were used to thinking in terms of compute, storage, and networking. We put the substrates of infrastructure, we create the most solid and capable infrastructure that we can create, then we build applications on top of that, and we open tickets in order to adjust the infrastructure to those applications and so on. So we were always building the house by the foundation, starting by solid principles of infrastructure. But that doesn't work anymore. When I have an application running in Google Cloud Europe, another one on on-prem vSphere on your uh, data center on the US, how do I do that? How do I start from the foundation if I don't understand what's the use case that is going to drive that infrastructure? So what happened over the last few years is that the driving force of infrastructure became the application. So now instead of thinking, how do I create the best networking that I can afford? I start thinking, how do I have a network infrastructure that automatically adjusts to the application needs? And this starts by having a network virtualization substrate that works across multiple environments, that now, through automation, allows through CI-CD uh, pipelines and processes to constantly create the network that needs the application. And then, of course, working across uh, multiple branches, multiple locations, and that enables cloud native. And we'll talk some of these things, how they fit together. The next is even more difficult, because as we go through uh, an application transformation and different substrates, private cloud, public cloud, now the question is, who's managing that? What's the expertise of the teams managing that? How do they work together? So always remember that it's not just about technology. Any transformation, especially one as big as, as the one that we are living right now with the movement to multi-cloud, to cloud, and the, the notion of cloud native applications, is how these uh, principles, the developers, the DevOps teams, the IT teams, the security teams, how are they going to work together in this new environment that is much more distributed, much more decentralized. So essentially, we need to figure out a way, how do we retrain our organizations, our teams, in order to work together? What type of tools are they going to use? What processes? How to adjust the processes? And how to have an end-to-end -end visibility that a problem that happens in a production environment and the DevOps team realizes about that uh, gets correlated to the security guys when a fix gets applied in a way that compliance was always maintained. So always think it's not just the technology transition is about how do we bring this technology movement into our organizations and how do we train our teams to be able to operate on that. So to that extent, we started working with Google and, and we we're saying, look, we, we share uh, this passion and this energy to towards saying, how do we help our customers uh, to drive the best out of the infrastructure that they have, regardless if it's public cloud with Google Cloud or with Sphere environments with VMware technologies? The thing is, how do you provide kind of this seamless interaction between private and public in a way that you don't have to worry about the complexities of establishing connectivity. 
You have the ability to essentially create applications that can move between private and public based on where do you need to have them, what is more efficient to have them. Or you have the ability to essentially discover what assets do you have, how do you connect them, how do you track them, how do you observe them, in a way that now essentially we provide some sort of an enterprise solution that makes this a reality that can be adjusted and ported into, into today's environments. So this is how we started the journey working together, and now we are going to go through some of the use cases and problems that we encounter along the way and some of the uh, work we are doing in order to solve that. So I'm going to pass it to Ines. Thank you, Pere. Um, yeah, so as uh, Pere mentioned, um, there is a lot in common that uh, we have the passion of solving some of the uh, use cases for, for the customer. So let me give you a little bit of perspective of what we see from Google Cloud and what are the type of problems that our customers are coming with. Uh, so there is um, uh, obviously a lot of uh, opportunities for innovation uh, by consuming Google Cloud services. Um, so in different verticals and in different industries, there are different uses for how to get uh, more insight of the data, more signals, real-time uh, uh, visibility into the um, uh, data that the um, um, enterprise are generating. In uh, financial services, we're seeing a lot of um, um, enterprises that want to um, uh, have more advanced uh, mathematical algorithms and, and models. Uh, we see a lot in uh, retail and in industrial to really transform their business by uh, starting to uh, analyze their data they're generating by training uh, machine learning models, for example, uh, with, um, uh, with the cloud. Uh, we see a lot of um, uh, healthcare opportunities for providing uh, better research and provide as well uh, better capabilities for real-time interaction um, hospital, uh, in hospital communication. And finally, in industrial and manufacturing, uh, there are um, many use cases for uh, providing uh, uh, better uh, supply chains uh, uh, results by getting uh, analytics of the um, uh, data uh, warehouse um, that gets generated as part of the supply chain, uh, being able to understand the faults and improve the quality on some of those uh, uh, supply chains uh, um, um, uh, capabilities. Um, in order to do that, customers are, uh, need to communicate to Google services. They need to send some of the data to Google services. They need to uh, be able to ingest the data and send back results that are meaningful for those use cases in real time. And uh, as it is a simple uh, example to uh, think about connectivity to the cloud, we will see that the complexity associated of managing and securing that communication and the underlying data that is so important to the enterprises and managing the services on top of that, it is really challenging and really a, a problem that we uh, want to solve uh, together. So the first thing that we encounter when we're actually um, uh, going for this, uh, for solving these use cases, is the connectivity to uh, to the cloud. So we uh, we need to make sure that we simplify, we secure the connectivity to the cloud. And in order to do so, we're uh, partnering with uh, VMware, with their uh, uh, VMware SD1 by Velo Cloud uh, solution. So uh, if you can imagine, you know now. You have your data centers, tens of data centers. You have a uh, thousand of branches, and then you really want to uh, uh, get advantage of all those new uh, uh, capabilities and innovation in the cloud. You need to start setting up that connectivity. For setting up that connectivity and onboard those services for your enterprise and your developers, 
and your DevOps to use, you need to start setting up a VPN. And then you can think of that as an n squared problem. You need to start setting up connectivity from any of those branches, any of those data centers to your cloud and set up point-to-point -point, uh, connectivities. You need to go and set up your uh, firewalls. And then you need to configure those on your branches and data centers. Then you need to go to the cloud and understand what the segmentation is across, make sure that the configuration is done correctly correctly, um, and then you need to secure the data. You need to make sure that the access to the data is really only um, um, accessible from users and locations that are um, um, allowed and um, they are authorized to access it. Um, and you can imagine now if you actually have a global deployment and then you need to have uh, geographical considerations for where your applications are sitting and where your data is sitting and how you access those, you need to set up additional policies in order to uh, enforce those. So it is uh, very complex on board for um, onboarding, but I think it is even more complex to maintain and operate because then you need to actually have uh, a mapping of your configurations in the cloud and in on-prem, and then uh, you need to be able to operate, get visibility, and manage uh, that securely uh, with a very fragmented uh, view of the wall in your private and in your public cloud. So in order to do that, uh, we want to um, um, uh, do better. We want to make sure our enterprise customers have better ways of doing that, and we think it's possible. And Perry is going, uh, going to walk us through how we're actually simplifying that journey and that operation. Thank you. So as Ines was mentioning, uh, we were looking at the problem from the different side, but we were having customers coming to us and saying, look, I want to connect to Google Cloud, uh, and I have all these problems, the VPNs, the firewalls, the geolocation. How can we solve that? And when we started to talk to Google, it was kind of a, a perfect match because what we saw is that the problem that Google was saying is how to accelerate the adoption of cloud. And the customers that we were having saying, how do I connect to cloud? We managed to essentially work together to create a solution. And the technology we use is uh, the NSX SD1 by VeloCloud. It's uh, an SD1 technology that the way it works is on the far left, we have what we call an edge. And this is a managed service that essentially the only thing you have to do is you get one of these edge appliances, you connect it to your location, connects automatically to the orchestrator, and that's it. Now you go to the orchestrator and you can manage your global network of all the branches that you have as if it was a single entity. And in there you can set global policies in terms of security, in terms of connectivity, in terms of application SLA, and the SD1 solution, what it does essentially is constantly monitors the flow of data traffic going from the edge to any other location, in this case going through what we call a gateway, a cloud gateway, the, the green box in the middle, or to other edges. And now it provides you a central view of this uh, square problem that Ines was mentioning before, end-to-end. Uh, -end. And then you start reasoning in terms of how do I provide an SLA policy for a specific app that needs to be granted regardless on what it talks to? How do I provide a virtual segment that is going to essentially isolate a component of the traffic that needs to talk to a critical part of my applications in the back end, or it needs to talk across different branches? How do I set up security policies? But you do it at the orchestrator level without having to worry about the specifics of the site where you may have to manage that. Now, what we did with Google, we started working on how to connect the SD1 technology by VMware to the Google capabilities. And we are going to explain it in the next slide, but basically you see that there's multiple ways to connect uh, the SD1 technology to the cloud. One is using the gateway capabilities to VPN into native cloud services, and this is one integration we've done with Google. But there's other ways that we are exploring that are much more efficient in terms of how to put a branch capability inside the cloud itself in a way that now you have a native connectivity to the VPC or to the the element that you want to have in the Google Cloud. So with this background, what we did is we started working with Google towards uh, connecting, as I was mentioning, all the sites, regardless if they were data centers, running applications, or branches needed to connect to the applications, not only to the private cloud, but to the public cloud. And by federating with the Google VPN capabilities, now we provided a global view with the NSX as the one orchestrator to essentially manage the connectivity as a 
capability as a service. So we went from having to manage uh, thousands of VPN points, thousands of firewall rules, trying to understand uh, in what location the closest Google service would be, to just a simple check that you say enable TCP connectivity and problem solved. And then, of course, you can go into a more granular way about defining application SLAs and security policies. We are going to see a very quick demo of this in a second, but uh, uh, later we can uh, get into the details and, and explain you more about how this works. So this was one of the major problems that uh, Ines was mentioning. Uh, how to connect to the Google Cloud services with a single point of management. But more important was cloud is not an static thing. You keep deploying more applications. You have your CICD pipelines. You have your production systems. You have your PCI compliance systems. You have different environments that constantly grow and shrink. The nature of cloud is that you don't have a set of predefined IP addresses or predefined resources. What you do is like essentially you grow and shrink as needed. You deploy more environments as needed. So the, the day two, the operational aspect is essentially where the significant advantage towards customers were coming. It was not just how to onboard the cloud, it's how to onboard the cloud and constantly maintain it as applications were coming and going and growing and shrinking in the cloud. So this was the first part of the collaboration. And after that, Ines, all the problems were solved and we could go home, right? Yeah, yeah, we should all go home. Uh, yeah, not so fast yet. Uh, <laughs> still problems to be solved. Uh, so um, there are, uh, of course, uh, you know, the connectivity, it is the connectivity aspect of it on uh, uh, onboarding and uh, maintaining, as Perry was mentioning. But there are additional use cases now. Uh, as uh, enterprises, and you guys are, um, are totally familiar with this, uh, you uh, onboard cloud and then you start deploying applications and services where there are opportunities, but there are reasons why certain applications and services uh, need to remain on-prem. And those could be because practical reasons, you know, it's not possible to replatform those, or it could be because of regulatory reasons or uh, location reasons for latency uh, uh, needs, uh, that those services need to be uh, localized. So what we see is that really um, this creates uh, cross dependencies of applications that need to be um, re that need to uh, stay on-prem, and then services that will be onboarded in cloud. Another example that is, for example, um, CICD deployments uh, that happen in cloud uh, in order to get advantage of the flexibility of those environments, but you want to uh, deploy the images to your uh, applications that are running on-premises. So all this really creates um, really, truly a mesh of applications that need to communicate to be secure uh, and to which we, we need to really control the communication, the authentication, and we need to get visibility about the performance and um, the, uh, uh, the way these applications talk to each other. So in order to do that, we have a, a bigger uh, uh, or another big problem to solve, which is the ability to really federate the communication and the management of these services in a way that is seamless across both environments. And there is a significant effort that uh, uh, VMware and us are driving together in which we have a common vision on how we're going to federate uh, these services in a way that can be operated um, um, in an easy way and a simplified way for our enterprise customers. Um, from Google perspective, uh, if you um, just uh, came from the keynote, you saw that we have announced um, uh, Google Cloud's Anthos um, in um, uh, GA. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about what we do in terms of uh, modernizing and building a cloud services platform um, at Google. Uh, we obviously have had uh, a lot of experience already in um, uh, Kubernetes environments. We have had for uh, years now the uh, uh, Google Kubernetes engine on uh, the cloud, which is a managed uh, platform in which we actually solve the problem for developers, but we also solve the problem uh, of the platform, of the platform operator in which we auto upgrade the node, we maintain, we auto scale, we repair. So we're really seeing our value as not only solving the developer problem, but also the administrative platform operator 
uh, problem and really fully given a uh, managed platform uh, for Kubernetes. What we have done is we have expanded to on-premises with GKE uh, on-prem, and we really remain with the same values and um, value prop and providing a managed uh, platform for Kubernetes in uh, on-prem, um, following the same principles that we had in cloud. And on top of that, we build value, and uh, we are uh, providing uh, uh, control plane capabilities with uh, go from you know cluster register and management, being able to authenticate the cluster so that we can actually manage and operate it. Uh, we provide visibility with the integration of a stack driver with logs. Uh, we are as well providing a config management uh, capability so that the configuration of the different um, uh, services and clusters can be done from a centralized uh, place. Um, we have built as well a marketplace uh, mm, a platform so that uh, Kubernetes uh, applications, not only for ours but for third parties, can be onboarded and consumed by our customers in a seamless way. And uh, finally, and this is the part in which you know we're going to talk more today, is we have an um, um, Istio um, service management that uh, we are uh, providing um, for um, managing and operating the service mess of the services. And in this specific uh, area is where we are collaborating very closely with, uh, uh, with VMware to provide solution of the operation and management of those services. I want to just uh, highlight that really the vision that we have is built on the open source capabilities at these various layers, like it anchors on the Kubernetes for orchestrating workloads, it anchors in Istio for the service management, and we really have a common view of how we can actually make um, those open source uh, manage uh, value at, um, uh, on both sides, work together seamlessly to uh, solve the problem of the service management. And with that, I want to um, 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 have Perry as well talking more about how we're actually federating both environments. So basically, as Ines was mentioning, what we started seeing is that uh, <coughs> a lot of our customers were starting to expand the footprint where they would develop those services. Uh, by the foundation of Kubernetes, we saw great traction on how to create microservices, and we started seeing that because of the footprint, the agility, the ability to essentially instantiate them, grow them, shrink them, we started to see a proliferation of Kubernetes environments in the enterprise. Of course, uh, we have uh, the PKS Kubernetes service uh, for the vSphere environments that we are deploying in data centers, but we started to see Kubernetes appearing in the branches. I mean, there's a lot of retailers looking on how to modernize the retail experience by putting digital signage, points of presence, uh, detection of who's coming to the store and customizing the, the behavior of the stores based on who you are. So that requires some lightweight form of compute that would be very agile. So this is where we started seeing all these Kubernetes services everywhere. And now, as Ines was mentioning, this is a different problem. Now we are not talking about connectivity from the point of view of IP connectivity, application SLAs. But now we are saying, why this application should be talking to your backend database? Is this application a production environment? Is this a development environment? Is this application connecting to the database on behalf of a user? So the problems went a little bit higher, where now we were not talking about connectivity from networking point of view, but we started to see the problems of identity, the problems of understanding what applications uh, are doing on behalf of the users that they have connected to the application. What data elements do you touch? So as Nes was saying, we started to look at this problem a couple of years ago, and we were saying, OK, this is going to be a new wave of things that we have to uh, work with enterprises to solve them. And we started to work around the project of Istio and Envoy in uh, a way to be able to solve that. But there was this problem of, OK, so I have multiple Kubernetes environments. I could create what's called a service mesh in each of those environments, where now we have the ability to connect a service to another service and understand what API calls, what authentication events, authorization, all these things, but it would be confined to every single location. And enterprises don't want that. They want to have, again, a common way to understand federated identity, authentication authorization, data access. So we had this gap in between the multiple Kubernetes environments the services running in the cloud, and we had to figure out how to solve and how to bridge that. So 
Within this, uh, we started working on this project, uh, NSX Service Mess, which is a product that we are developing and now we are in beta stage, but we are going to announce it as uh, soon as fully available. That essentially was the ability to essentially control what we call a data plane inside a Kubernetes environment based on Istio and Envoy, and be able to control through the service that we are creating on top, many of them. And the idea is that from this uh, vantage point, we have the ability to essentially discover all the services that are running in the Kubernetes environments. Then, once you discover them, understand how are they performing, what are they doing, what's their SLI, SLOs, and be able to react based on that. After that, essentially focus on how to control them, how to put uh, security policies, how to put application level policies, and getting into the security aspect that we are discussing on how to have an understanding of security end to end. Within this, Google was working on Anthos, and we were saying, well, I mean, we have common goals. We are all trying to solve the notion of how enterprises are going to glue services across clouds in a, in a centralized way, that now identity, policy, visibility, observability are going to be consistent, because at the end of the day, it's all about operations, about how to keep your applications running regardless of where they are. So within this environment, again, we went back to the drawing board and we said, well, uh, Google is providing Istio and Envoy-based capabilities in their uh, VKE environment. We are working with our Kubernetes environments and providing Istio and Envoy capabilities. What if the control planes that we have developed would start to federate between ourselves in a way that now from a customer experience, what you have essentially is an end-to-end -end mesh of microservices talking to each other, regardless if they are native in cloud, in public cloud, or running on your branches or your private cloud, they all form part of an end-to-end -end mesh. Now, of course, that's uh, easier said than done, because in reality, there's many more things needed in the sense that we have to create the ability to create manage uh, like domains or global namespaces in a way that not all the services talk to each other. You're going to have production applications, you're going to have development environments, you're going to have sensitive things. So it's not just a flat end-to-end -end mesh, but it's what we are doing with Google is bringing the capabilities on top of the open source components that we are developing about how to make it work for enterprises, how to provide the proper level of segmentation, how to provide the proper level of visibility. Essentially, the NSX service mesh control element federates with the Anthos controller in a way that now we can have a federated identity that when a service on-prem talks to a service in the cloud, now we maintain the end-to-end -end properties of that communication, being able to have essentially mutually authenticated TLS sessions with a proper level of encryption, authentication, authorization, and so on. So that was going up the stack, how to go from the connectivity plane that we provide in the previous example, and now go one level above and start to get into the notion of what are applications doing on behalf of whom, and what data elements do you touch, end-to-end, -end across multiple clouds. So that's the nature of the collaboration. Of course, uh, we are going through a journey, and what we started working on is essentially, this is the, the high-level overview of the project. So we have uh, Kubernetes environments by VMware PKS on-prem, controlled by Service Mesh, and then we have GKE clusters running Kubernetes and talking to Google Native Services with Anthos controlling this. And we started essentially controlling the interoperability of services talking from private to public cloud and vice versa at the federation level with end-to-end mutually authenticated TLS sessions. That's the part that we are demonstrating uh, right now. We are going to show uh, some little video and, and if you want more details uh, in the booth later. But the work doesn't end here. Of course, now we have to go to the next level of saying, sure, I could federate identity, I could federate end-to-end -end encryption, but what about coordinating policies? because now you're going to have a set of hierarchies of policies, organizations, groups, roles, and so on, on the cloud. You're going to have another one on the on-prem. Now the idea is how to bring all these things together. So take this collaboration as the starting point of solving these problems. Still lots of work to do. So we'll continue to work as the project evolves with Google. But the end goal essentially is to allow end-to-end -end visibility, connectivity, security, policy, compliance between public and private at the service level, understanding from users, services, and data, end-to-end. -end. So with this, maybe let's talk a little bit about the work we did uh, 
together. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, by the way, uh, we're going to show a quick uh, demo video. Uh, please uh, step by uh, the booth, really, to get more information and more details. Uh, uh, this is just a quick snapshot. Um, there is a lot more data uh, that can be uh, uh, made available to you there. Um, just to uh, quickly set the stage, uh, I just want to recap a little bit of the challenge about the challenges that we're going to um, uh, about to demonstrate, and just to uh, really get a, a view of what those challenges are. Just imagine uh, business transformation for a retailer, and you know the journey that uh, they uh, go through. Um, they might have um, a check out payment, shipment, you know, services that it's uh, monolithic running uh, in uh, on-prem. And then they start moving some of the capabilities to cloud, you know, for the flexibility, uh, the pay-as-you-grow, uh, the front-end capabilities of, of the cloud. So in this case, they're moving catalog. So as you are actually doing that, then you face the problem of connectivity. That's not how we started actually discussing in the session. And you need to make sure that your branches uh, get connected to, to the cloud. And you need to connect those applications on top of that. And now imagine that you're actually breaking the mo monolithic that you have on-prem, and then you start creating microservices that are uh, some pieces of the monolithic that you had before. So for example, you're breaking payments and shipments, but really all these applications need to communicate with each other. There are dependencies, there's data that they need to share their state, or there is um, uh, some type of um, uh, communication that needs to happen. Uh, you still need to have the communication to the cloud, and then you add complexity with the communication of the applications on top of it, on-prem and in cloud. And as you go through the transformation, you see opportunities for uh, getting my, more insight of your data, for example, in your branches, and you see an opportunity of having uh, data uh, image recognition uh, in the branches and, for example, having uh, ML train models that you are running in cloud in which you can uh, extract uh, meaningful information real time in your branches. What that requires is, of course, the underlying connectivity, but it also creates additional dependencies of your communication of applications from on services and, and, and to cloud, and so on, uh, keeps growing. You then add you know, recommendation, or you want to do add insertion to add value to your business. And all that, really what it creates, and this is just a sample, it is a, a very complicated relationship of services that have dependencies among each other. So the key is, how do you secure, operate, how in this environment you make sure that, for example, your dev environments are not talking to your production environments, that there is no data that is crossing boundaries that is not safe. Um, the observability and security of these uh, deployments is, is challenging uh, unless you have a way of actually having a single view of this and a single operation uh, across all these deployments. And this is really what we want to talk about in the in the video so with that um just want to do a a quick show a, a large retailer operates a global network of stores and branch offices the retailer uses google cloud for their public facing shopping application and for running a secure analytics platform the VMware SD1 solution provides simplified, automated, and optimized access to Google Cloud services from every site over secure connections. When a new store location opens, a VMware SD1 Edge appliance is installed. With just a few clicks, the new site is associated with secure VPN connections to Google Cloud. You can enable Google Cloud service in the profile section. Activation is now complete. With VMware SD-WAN, customers are able to automatically connect branch sites securely to GCP services, avoid manual creation of VPNs, firewalls, and routing rules, and dynamically add new sites to the secure connection. The newly connected store sends real-time information such as sales and inventory updates to Google Cloud BigQuery for data analytics. Traffic from different applications can be classified and optimized individually. Multiple
multiple network links are actively managed to ensure that application traffic achieves the best performance, automatically steering traffic to avoid network issues. VPC service controls are set up to protect the analytics application from untrusted networks. If a user on the public network tries to access the secure application, VPC service controls ensure that access is prevented. Stack router logs confirm that access from public networks is denied. Now we move on to an application with microservices being managed by Anthos, an NSX service mesh. The company built a new e-commerce application that runs on Kubernetes and involves several microservices. Some services are deployed on branches. Other services run on Anthos in Google Cloud. Company leverages Istio to connect, secure, control, and observe services. It is NSX service mesh for the services running in a branch and managed Istio component of Anthos for cloud-based services. Federation established between Anthos and NSX service mesh is enabling the use of different infrastructure and identity providers for each environment. Services can securely communicate using MTLS. Consistent policies can be applied for access control. Service Mesh Dashboard demonstrates application topology and each service's performance metrics. Federation between NSX Service Mesh and Anthos enables services to interact securely and transparently in hybrid clouds. And as Ines was saying, this is just a, a quick uh, kind of high-level marketing video about some of the things we've done. But we encourage everybody to go to the VMware booth and maybe to the Google booth where we have uh, live uh, demos uh, with uh, much more detail in terms of how from an SD1, how do you onboard a site, how do you connect to Google, how do you set the policies, the applications and SLA and so on. And with the NSX service mesh connected to Anthos, you'll see the same. How do I discover the connectivity metrics? How do I see how services are performing? How do I understand the relations between them and how do they do the end-to-end -end federation with MTLS? We just wanted to summarize uh, essentially the two problems that we've been working together to solve. And essentially is this notion that when you have hybrid cloud solutions, uh, it's uh, relatively well understood how to provision services in the cloud, how to provision services on-prem, but those need to communicate together because we don't have applications that they don't interact. We have uh, the payment systems with the front ends and things like that. So the idea was how to first start by addressing secure connectivity between private cloud and public cloud, regardless on the many offices, many branches, many sites you may have. But then the next was to emphasize this notion that the wall is moving very fast. And it's not just about how to provide secure connectivity, but how to get into the fabric of what the application is doing. And if we don't understand, we don't secure, we don't control what applications are doing, what users are doing with these applications, and what data elements are being touched, means that we don't really have control and visibility of infrastructure. And this is the idea that we have to get into uh, the service mesh fabric or the business fabric of the communications that enable us to essentially now take control at the behavior level, at the SLA level, at the security level of what applications do. And this is essentially what drove uh, VMware and Google working together. And as a summary, essentially, we were saying in order to enable our customers, enterprises, to essentially achieve a true hybrid cloud story, we start by connectivity and application level QSS, but essentially we have to go to service management and understand the end-to-end, -end because at the end of the day, this is just, again, infrastructure. And we are not doing infrastructure for the sake of infrastructure, but essentially, to enable enterprises to innovate, to become more agile, to become faster, to deliver new value to their customers. And this essentially has to be done while maintaining the enterprise class capabilities of being able to operate it with the security guarantees and the visibility elements that uh, the operational environments of enterprises may need. So as a summary, I wanted to emphasize what Ines was saying, that the two companies are working together and very committed to the open source frameworks that we are using. We are working a lot on the public domain doing contributions around Istio, Envoy, Kubernetes, and some of the projects associated to that, because this is kind of a true community effort that as uh, the federation elements of multiple clouds work together, it has to be built out of common standards. And the common standards right now are being built out of open source frameworks. The other notion is this shared vision of saying, this is not about 
uh, what's right. Is it public cloud? Is it private cloud? Is it uh, something else? It's it, this, this phase is gone. It's not about uh, where things should go, but it's how they should connect together, how they should be operated together, how they be secured together, because the whole thing is about options, alternatives, and capabilities, and enabling essentially the right environment for the right use case. And the last essential is this, is always keeping the enterprise focus because this is not about creating quick prototypes or making things uh, run uh, in a small environment, but it's essentially how to grow these technologies uh, in order to make them production ready for enterprises. With this, uh, I wanted to thank all of you. 